Okay, so this is the overall design. Um, I can explain each one in detail, but first we're going to start off with um, the general components. So this robot consists of, I don't know, um, 10, yeah. So this consists of three main components. You have um, the gear system, you have the um, climbing system, and you have the shooting system. Uh, okay, next one. Okay, and this is another version of dimensions. So you start off here with the gear system. You have um, a metal ramp consisting of two pieces on each side. Um, it would look like this. You'd have um, two metal pieces like that. And uh, essentially you'd have a small piece of metal going a little bit above to make a sort of lip, a little fence. And that'll guide the gears down. Uh, additionally, you also have a plexiglass um, opening there because um, this ramp opening is actually, this right here is 12 inches, but um, since the loading station is about 2 feet, we wanted, to amp we wanted to make it a little bit more the opening, so it can catch the gears better. So we have that, it's going to be about maybe 16 inches. I, this is all to scale, by the way. Every single one of these squares is 2 inches. And um, so then over here, we have an L-shaped piece. So if you see here, the gear slides down, slides down this ramp. And um, this L-shaped piece would actually be turned by a servo motor to be flush with the ramp. And once the gear catches down here, then this servo motor can turn back up into this upright position and push the gear into the, the hook system. Additionally, this L-shaped piece is also open in between here. So you can actually push the gear all the way to the end. You don't have to worry about it falling down or falling off the hook or anything like that. And this is very quick because you can just uh, pick up the gear, um, turn it upright, slide it in, and back up, and then get more. So just pick up and shove in. That's it. It's quick. Uh, next system here. No, next one's climbing. Okay, uh, climbing system. It consists of. I know on the robot there was some. It looked a little different, but climbing system we changed it a bit, and we took a little bit of inspiration from um, the robot in three days design that they had a spool essentially. That uh, you cover it in Velcro, and then you have rope covered in the other half of Velcro. I already checked the rules. It doesn't seem to be anything against having rope covered in Velcro. And uh, what would happen is that you have a sim motor uh, attached on one end, addition, um, also combined with a ratchet system, so that it would lock after every rotation. And what this would do is it would catch onto the rope and start spinning. It would lift up the robot, and then um, at the end of the match, we could just take it down easily. It's not not a problem either way. I also have a picture of. Um, a real life example of this. That's exactly what we're thinking. So just be a, a strong piece of metal and it would just latch on into a, a gear. Okay, and then it's also bracketed down to the center of the robot. This is going to be right in the center of the robot. And since I was showing here in the gear system how this is all open, you can actually put this right in the center of the robot. There's nothing in the way there. And uh, the rope can just pass over, you suck it up, and you can start lifting the robot from the center. You don't have any uh, tilting of the robot or anything when it's going up. Let me see here. I think this is shooting the race Sam. You have to find the center of gravity. Yeah, of course. Okay, Sam, so, shooting. Okay. So, <clears throat> how the shooting system is going to work is that there's going to be basically... Is this a plexiglass hopper? Oh, let me use a mouse. Uh, so this is the plexiglass hopper in which the balls are going to be stored. And then when the when we're going to need to shoot, so the idea is that the balls uh, kind of roll down uh, this tube here uh, into like a feed. And because of the uh, like slant, they're always going to be going downhill. And so when they get the bottom to the bottom, there's basically a motor that just uh, spins them up and they it goes out of like a... Um, uh, just a PVC pipe that's going to shoot it. So basically, so this is how it's going to look on the side. Um, we're going to. I think it's on the right. Go to the right. Okay. Oh, I, I, yeah. So basically, this is how, gonna, how it's going to kind of look in the front. So uh, you're going to see. Uh, just ignore this wheel here. It's really probably just going to be one. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be need for for more. Um, and so basically, just the, there's going to be an inclined plane. The ball's going to roll in, and it's just going to shoot up, and this will direct the shot. So what we, what that will enable us to do is that we can instead of um, necessarily having to uh, like precisely aim everything, we can just find like a sweet spot in the arena where we can around that spot kind of like shoot consistently into the the goal, and just have like a consistent fast shooter. 
Uh, this will make shooting much faster, and it'll it'll make it so we can load and shoot balls like uh, uh, as a breeze. Um, yeah, I also wanted to add real quick that um, where is it? For the actual base in here, it's going to be slanted on both sides. You're going to be slanting in the in the this. Okay, so you see from this view of the robot, it's slanted that way too because they're all it's aiming the balls all towards the feed. And also, it's going to have a small curvature on the upper lip of this so that the balls don't get stuck up there. They'll actually slide down very easily. And this section right here, this feed, is constantly going to just be filled with balls. So we just have it instantly just shooting quickly like that. So one of the, some of the main uh, benefits of this design is that um, it's very all the systems are very independent of each other. So as you can see here, none of them interfere with each other. You can build one. You can build the other. You can build... Um, this section, if we don't get time to build a certain section, we can just leave it. It doesn't affect anything. For example, let's say we wanted to, let's say we just built the gear system. We built that whole ramp system and we don't have any more time, then that's it. We have a great gear bot. If we want to keep going and we have time, then we have the hopper system, we have the shooting system, we have the climbing system, and they're all separately independent from each other. And it also works to be able to partition the work between different, uh, different teams that can work on each part separately, and then we can just amalgam everything together. Uh, so finally, uh, we have all the dimensions that we thought would be necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, we have them all recorded uh, in here, uh, and more pictures of like the full layout, how it would look, but this is just like an overview. In addition, we're thinking of using mechanum wheels uh, as after research and using and, uh, like looking in juxtaposition uh, by experience of other teams, uh, we've noticed that in this game, especially because there's no harsh terrain or, an, or necessary necessarily anything that's not easy to pass with wheels, we can use uh, mechanic wheels to uh, more effect as they enable more omnidirectional movement. Mm -hmm. okay. All done? Yep. Yeah. No, no, I got, I'll take care of it. Uh, Lauren, you went, right? I missed you. No, no.